G'day and welcome to the Noob Spiro podcast, the show where we interview spearfishing experts, authorities and characters from all around the world. To become a better Spiro, come and join our spearfishing community at noobspiro.com. I wanted to share awesome experiences that you can have when you are in the water and that's why I started spearfishing. I just clamped down on the reel and got drugged down to about 50 feet and I'd never had a battle like that before in my life. So when you're learning where to hunt and find fish, they're the hot spots, it's where fish want to be. Don't overcomplicate your gear, don't go diving dressed up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I actually started off in stubbies with a bloody belt with a pig knife on it. And I've seen this big fin break the surface, roll in the water, look down, here's this nice big grey pipe. Oh, 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 oh. Once your face hits the water and you feel relaxed and all the other stresses of life seem to disappear. It's a whole new world and it's mysterious, it's magical. Beats the shit out of knitting anyway. Oh yeah. Today we are chatting with the Speed Apparel founder, Aaron Chase. Aaron and his wife, Janelle, founded the brand back in 2012 as a way to spend some time together while Aaron finished off his commitments with the Air Force in South Florida. The brand has since gone from strength to strength and Aaron has since joined the Spearheads crew with the likes of Jose de Bassa and Andrew from Coasters from Nautilus. Today, we talk to Aaron all about GoPro and how the Spearheads team use GoPro to make great video. He talks to us about accessories, settings, and how they go about making their vids. We also talk to Aaron about what spearfishing sponsors are looking for, what you need to be doing, and what you can expect from a sponsor once you're sponsored. He also talks to us about how to improve your Aspetto technique and how he uses it to shoot more fish. So without further ado, it's over to Aaron. Today's show is brought to you in partnership with Adreno Spearfishing Supplies. Adreno is one of the world's biggest and best spearfishing stores. You can visit Adreno online at spearfishing.com.au or in store at their Brisbane or Sydney locations. So g'day, Noob Spiro listeners, you're in for a treat today. We've got Aaron Chase from Speared Apparel, and he's also a Spearheads collaborator. So former guest on the show, Andrew Concosis from Nautilus, and uh, he's in there with a bunch of these kind of dudes with Jose de Barca, and um, we'll fire off another couple of names when we get to it. But um, there's a recent film out with those guys in the Bahamas. They have a lot of fun down there. It's a really good film, and they've got heaps of tutorials out about gear and equipment. Um, Aaron also is a reserve in the military over there, so he gets out doing that once per month and uh, has to shave apparently once per month. That's got to be rough, Aaron. It's it's tough. I have to cry every time that red beard comes off, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a derogatory name for redheads in, in America? Uh, ginger. Um, oh, but, ginger. But what's weird is is I'm actually not a redhead. I have blonde oh, okay. hair, but my beard just grows in red, and I'm proud of it. Oh. He's a proper Nordic man, isn't he? By the sounds of it. I've got I've got brown hair and a red beard, so I'm kind okay. of the same. So okay, good. So in Australia, they call anyone with any red hair a ranger. So you, uh, ginger's better, I think. So that's cool. A ranger, ranger, ranger. Yeah, yeah. ranger. Nice. I'll have to use that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it come from, but anyway. So. We, we also chatted a little bit before the show. You mentioned giving our audience a, perhaps a, a new tag name. What, what do you reckon? You know, I was wondering, I was, like I said, I was asking you guys what you called them. You didn't really have a name. I was thinking maybe Noobers, you know? Noobers. Hey, hey nice. Noobers. Hey, Noobers. <laughs> Let's run with it. You're in for a treat, you make, Noobers. You're, you're in for a treat, so Noobers. American. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh, it's good to have some Americans on the show. We love it. We love our American guests. So where, where did you get started spearfishing and how long have you been at it? Uh, about five years ago when it was my best friend. We've been friends since we were about 12. Told me a story. Uh, he was scuba diving and shot a fish and the shark circled him. And uh, I thought that was really cool. He moved down to South Florida where I was. And uh, we talked about, you know, getting scuba stuff and going out and spearing fish. Um, but it was too expensive to buy all the scuba stuff and it was only 30 feet deep in South Florida where we were at. So I said, why don't we just try free diving? So obviously got online and started doing some research about free diving and, and, uh, here we are five years later, you know, I, having fun. I really, I really like the fact that you chose free dive spearfishing just 
because it was cheap. I, I, that, that's a nice perspective. Yeah, that it is, sounds a lot like me, actually. I appreciate that. For, for anyone that knows knows that I'm about as cheap as it gets. So, <laughs> join the club. Uh, so you started in 30 feet of water. What yep. sort of species did you did you start targeting, and and how did that sort of go from there? Well, with like with any other spear fisherman in South Florida, the first species that's so easy to get is hogfish, and it just happens to be a delicious fish. So. I'd go and get hogfish and come home. My wife loved it because she had this awesome fish to eat. And then, uh, you know, as you spearfish a little bit more, you start to, you know, gain your skills and start to get, you know, groupers and snappers and and then on to, you know, the pelagics, the blue water stuff. So, yeah, we started out with uh, um, hogfish and, and red grouper was the, the mainstay. Those are the two dumbest fish in South Florida. <laughs> I like that. So, what's the viz like over there? And I mean, you said sort of thirty feet. What, what's the viz like? And um, we we using a pole spear? Uh, no pole spear. I was using a old, I don't even remember sea hunter, sea sea hornet, old uh, oh, gun. There you go. Yeah. What, I mean, again, the cheapest gun I could find at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the viz was great. South Florida, where we were hunting um, homestead, actually. Um, usually 50 foot of viz plus. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Okay. So, so what's the kind of like, um, maybe this, the story, your first really memorable fish. Uh, yeah, it was a, a, a dumb red grouper. Um, we were towing behind the boat. My buddy was, uh, in the boat with my wife actually. And, uh, just towing, looking for a spot. And I saw a hogfish from the surface, probably 30 feet. And uh, dove down to get the hogfish, let go of the rope, dove down. And right where the hogfish was, was this red grouper just staring at me, this huge red grouper. So obviously I shot it. And when I shot it, I saw a whole bunch of other hogfish in the area. So I come up and I tell my friend, there's fish everywhere. So now he's scrambling to get his stuff on. And we're (laughs) new at spearfishing. And he goes to put his mask on and the strap breaks. Oh, (laughs) no. So he's like, I don't have a mask. I'm like, oh, well. So I go down, shoot a hogfish. <laughs> I come up. I'm like, just just take care of this. He hands me his gun. I'd go down and get another fish. I ended up getting like three or four fish in that spot. And he couldn't jump in because he didn't have a mask. <laughs> oh, I love what it. What a mate's for. Yeah. That's yeah. unreal. You, you, didn't, you didn't give him a turn with your mask either, did you? Oh, no. I couldn't let the fish <laughs> <laughs> right. Love it. What um. Mate, can I ask this question? In Florida, <laughs> your top five dumbest fish. So you said you, you started in Florida on hogfish and red groper. Right. From what are the next three fish a new guy starting out should look for, like increasing in difficulty? Oh, man. Um, I'd say maybe yellow jack. Uh, it's a very good eating fish, uh, but they're they're a pelagic type fish. They're not going to like be in you know, in the reef and stuff, they'll be there, but they're going to be swimming through. Um, yep. Hmm. Uh, do you guys, do you get Jack, Jack Crevel there? Uh, yeah, but they're not good to eat. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They're, um, they're very bloody meat. I mean, you could use it to smoke and make some fish dip. Um, okay. Our mate not... Ben Choi loves them. He's the world <laughs> record holder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we we recently interviewed Ben Choi from over there, and he's done a bit of spearfishing around Florida and, and hey. Texas. And yeah, I, I don't know if you know Ben, but yeah, he's got the he had the world record for pole spear with Jack Crevel. And, yeah, uh, I, I, and they they are dumb. Um, you know, they'll swim right up to you. Um, yep. And and I'm not I'm not making fun of anyone that shoots them. I'm yep. I'm all for if you're going to eat a fish. I don't care what you shoot. You can shoot a barracuda. You can shoot whatever as long as you're going to eat it. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, cool. Fair enough. Okay, so we got we got some there anyway. We've got hogfish, groper, yellow jack, snapper, and um guys like Turbo that can't shoot anything else, maybe Jack Crevel. So Yeah, yeah. The snappers yeah. the snappers in Miami are pretty <laughs> difficult though. Um okay. they're, they're pretty uh they're pretty nimble. I didn't shoot one for a while when I was in the water, but when I did I was pretty proud of it. Okay, cool. All right. And how many species of snapper have you got? You got mutton snapper and then... Oh, I wouldn't even know. It took me a long time. Mutton especially is hard to shoot um, as a new guy, you know. Yeah. Uh, mangrove snapper, there's lane snapper, there's schoolmasters. Oh, cool. There's there's a whole bunch uh, in South Florida there. There's kuberas. Um, 
Yeah, it's unreal. There's a lot. I'm sure I'm forgetting some. I don't want to make myself seem too dumb here. That's all good. I mean, this segues really nice into kind of the next question we have on the show, which is what's your favorite hunting technique and how do you apply it effectively? Um, I've recently started um, a speto. So um, for those that don't know, it's where you just go to the bottom and just hang out at the bottom and kind of wait for the life to come to you. Um, obviously, I'm sure a lot of people have talked about and a lot of people have heard uh, the slower you move, the, the less aggressive you are towards the fish, the more curious they're going to be and come to you. So that's a technique that I like, and I've been really trying hard to perfect that uh, when okay. I'm diving. And um, as you've sort of got better at free diving, I mean, is that technique started developing because you're getting a bit more bottom time? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, obviously, it's hard to get a fish to come in if you're only on the bottom you know, for 30 seconds or 40 seconds. So you really have to work on your bottom time to be able to stay long enough that the fish is their, their curiosity is going to outweigh their, um, their fear, you know? Okay. So the whole, the, the espetto thing, I mean, I think in Australia we call it holding bottom time cause we're, mm-hmm. we're simple folk, but, um, <laughs> if, if you were to give somebody advice on a espetto on just lengthening that time on the bottom, what steps or what advice would you give to a guy like surface protocol and the, the, the drop and run us through how you've improved your bottom time? Well, I'm going to be a, I'm sure a broken record to anyone else that's been interviewed is a uh, class. Um, I took a free diving class and that really helped, you know, that was okay. my big jump. Um, but yep. from there it's really just being comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. I had, you know, milestones, you know, going past 50 feet. Now, holding my breath, I can hold my breath for a long time, but you start going below 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet, you know, the pressure on your body is uncomfortable for me. And, uh, so it took me, uh, you know, a while of diving to get used to that pressure and that feeling, um, yep. and get comfortable. So each it's, you know, each, a, a, a phase, you know, now it's, you know, murky water. If I'm in really murky water, where I can only see a couple feet and we're diving, you know, 80 feet. Um, my breath hole is not that good because I'm not comfortable there, you know? Yeah, no, this is all good stuff. I mean, the reason Turbo's asked is because him and I are co-writing an article at the moment about how to get a bit more bottom time. And, you know, some of these things that you've brought up are exactly the points he's made. And I mean, you know, for a guy that only dives to 15 feet and holds probably 10 or 15 seconds bottom time, <laughs> right. he's managed to come up with quite a few good, good points. <laughs> nice. We're, I've we're never held bottom apart. time before. Yeah, we're not far apart. Yeah. I've never held bottom time before, but if I did, <laughs> these are the methods I'd employ. I, yeah. I grabbed yeah. some sand one time. Yeah. <laughs> Touch and, and go. And he yeah. brought it up to the surface to show us. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's good. But let's see, all jokes aside, so once once you're on the bottom um, and you're you know you're holding your bottom time, what are a few tips? for getting the fish to be comfortable with you, like, uh, you know, with your eyes, your movements, that kind of thing? Yeah, so um, try not to look them dead in the eye. And for me, I try to, I make some, you know, it depends on what kind of fish I'm hunting. Um, And there's, uh, you know, I'm going to say right away that there's a lot that I don't know. And the people that I spearfish with and spearheads know a heck of a lot more than me. And uh, I I am very honored to spearfish with them and learn from them every time we go out. Um, but for me and some of the stuff that I've learned is, um, sometimes grunting, um, or scratching or throwing sand. I know that in the Bahamas, um, throwing sand up with the big muttons, they'll, they'll start coming in still usually out of range of a pole spear or something, but, but, um, throwing sand up, uh, really helps, you know, for certain types of fish. I like that. Um, okay. So turbo, so when you can hold some bottom time. Mm-hmm. Grunting and scratching, you're already good at both of those. So <laughs> you're going to get some fish, man. Uh, We've just and, got to get you to the bottom. And you mentioned the the eye contact. So what? So what? That sp- that spooks the fish, looking them, staring them down. Uh, yeah, yeah. If if you're looking directly at the fish, um, they're going to perceive it as a threat. Uh, if you're not looking at them and you're not paying them any attention, they don't feel threatened. 
Yeah, that's that's a good point. And I've I've noticed a similar thing um, on a night drinking in the city with Isaac. <laughs> when he when he sees a, an attractive female, he stands in the corner staring them down, and you can actually see them become quite uncomfortable. Um, and they'll, they'll generally leave. And I go, oh, you've blown it again. Oh. I knew I knew he was teaming me up for a joke straight away. Okay, so moving on, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do to each other. So. Um, Moving on, like you, you've spent five years out spearfishing. What's one of the scariest moments you've had, and what did you learn from it? Um, scariest moment was uh, I was spearfishing with Justin Baker. He's uh, also one of the spearheads up in uh, his area, Fort Pierce. Very bad visibility, uh, probably ten or fifteen foot of visibility, and we're diving sixty feet. And um, we we uh, do one up, one down. You know, we do the buddy system. But when there's 15 foot of visibility, you just can't see the person on the bottom. So what we do is, you know, you watch the person go down as far as you can. You kind of get a trajectory of where they're going, and you pay attention to how long they've been under. And you go, okay, well, it's about time for them to come up. You start looking for them. Um, well, this particular time, you know, there was someone in the boat, and Justin and I in the water, and he goes down, and it's getting longer, and it's, you know, over two minutes, which I know he's, you know, he can dive two minutes, but he's usually up at this point. So I'm getting worried. I start asking the boat guy, have you seen Justin? Hasn't seen him. And then that kind of, I don't want to say panic, but that really mm. worried feeling starts coming in. And, you know, I'm like, hey, uh, he's down. He should be up. You know, so we start scanning the horizon. It was a little bit rough that day. And, and when he went under, he ended up turning uh, under the water to fall a ledge and uh, came up on the other side of the boat and oh, wow. didn't really, you know, didn't really think anything of it. He just was breathing up for his next dive. Meanwhile, me and the boat guy are looking for him. So that, that feeling of, Oh man, we just lost him and, and it's murky. I don't know how I'll be able to find him if he's on the bottom. You know, it was, it was pretty scary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah, cool. All right. So, I mean, what did you take away from it? Did you did you guys have a bit of a chat after and sort of like just sort of agree to circle up once you know once you'd surfaced because um he 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 probably wasn't even aware that you were stressed out on the other side of the boat. Yeah, uh, yeah, there was some. Uh, we're all playful with each other, but there was some expletives that were yelled at him uh, <laughs> when I finally did find out where he was. Um, yeah. But yeah, we you know we talked about you know if you come up. And I'm not right there. Just let me know where you're at. And, you know, we can link up again and then I can do my dive, you know. Um, but yeah. he was just breathing up and thinking that I would just come to him like I knew where he was. And it was an honest mistake. I mean, obviously, we dive together a lot. And, and I know he's a safe diver. But that particular, particular time was a, a scary moment for me. This part of the show is called Veterans Vault. So it's where we ask our special guests to take us sort of deep into an area of their expertise. And, um, you know, due to your involvement with spearheads um, and, and something else, we, we've sort of, we've, we've organized to cover off two topics. We're going to hopefully do a deep dive into GoPro, okay. effective GoPro use and, um, and how to get sponsored. So can we start with GoPro, Aaron? Sure can. Cool, man. So, I mean... Can you can you just tell us a bit about your experience using GoPros and and how how that got started? Um, obviously, GoPros are awesome. Um, you can capture that that great moment of spearing that you can relive it. You know the 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 awesome moment that you had underwater. Um, you, you can now relive that on a computer. You can share it with your friends. You know we've had some cool shark stuff um, that I can bring back and. Don't show my wife, but show my friends, you know, <laughs> but, um, they're compact, they're affordable, you know, they're, they're just great. Uh, I think they're great for our sport too. And I think that they've been a huge asset to growing spearfishing as, as a whole, because now people that wouldn't typically understand what goes on to the water can see it, you know, in, in many different ways, obviously, yep. obviously through YouTube and Facebook and, you know, Instagram. Yep. Yeah, cool. All right. So, how long have you been been using GoPros with your with your friends and maybe spearheads? Um, I I don't I don't remember exactly when we started using it. Um, I know that 
you know, kind of the way that Spearhead started was, you know, Jeremy Fole would put out a video with his GoPro footage and Jose would put out a video with him and Andrew's stuff. And Justin Baker would put out a video with his and I just bought one. And so I started, you know, using it. I'm like, I'm going to record videos. And then, you know, Jose and I were talking one day. I'm like, why don't we take everyone's clips from their GoPros and send them all to you, Jose, and then you edit them and you do a cool video. That way we, instead of everyone doing one video a year, we can do a few videos a year. Um, and you know, they'll be cool to watch and it won't be just one person, you know, they'll be, you know, the group of people. So that's, that's really the start of spearheads right there. Um, yeah, right. okay, was, cool. you know, taking everyone's GoPro footage and everyone sending it to Jose and, and we, he made a video from it, you know? Yeah. Awesome. And the beauty of that is you get so many different perspectives right? Yeah. in, in, in the film and there's more, seems to be more action. There's a lot of action going on in your stuff. And yeah. you don't have to do any editing. Jose does it. So <laughs> Yeah, it, no, that's exactly right. As soon as I got my footage and I'm like, okay, I got footage. What am I going to do with it? Uh, I'll just send it to Jose, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't I let him do and And he's obviously from the beginning days of Spearheads. And you guys can go on YouTube and look, you know, Spearheads TV. The first videos we did compared to what we just released in Bahamas, the Obviously, we use some GoPros, but mostly uh, underwater DSLR cameras. Um, yeah. but, um, but but Jose still films all his stuff with a GoPro. And I bet you if you watch that the Bahamas video, you won't be able to tell the difference between the DSLR because of the way he edits it. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this is what I mean. There's a difference in sort of and 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 the quality of people's footage with GoPros and there's there's a lot of stuff that people learn the hard way and sometimes some of the guys aren't even aware of now, which is why I was really keen to do a bit of a veterans vault on it with you. So look, a guy, a guy has just bought his GoPro, um, you know, say he's been spearfishing for maybe 18 months or something and he's, he's just got his GoPro. It's arrived in the mail. He's, you know, he's got all the options in front of him. What, what kind of settings is he going to, well, first of all, like he unwraps it. What, what do you think he should, what, what should his next steps be? Like, practice with it around the house or like in the swimming pool uh how how would you go about it just make sure it turns on to start with um <laughs> <laughs> i've had that happen before and uh, gopro is really great about fixing it but i've had you know i bought a new gopro and it didn't turn on but um the first thing for me um i would definitely get more batteries um and the memory cards because for us we're in water uh, we go out and you have the regular battery. It's going to be out in an hour. And then now you get out of the water and you're having an opportunity to introduce water into the GoPro when you try to change the battery. So what we've done is, um, I don't know if it's available in Australia, but in the U S uh, they're called Wasabi batteries for GoPro. And, um, we bought them on Amazon and they're the double ones. You know, they, you need the extra door on the back. Um, okay. but with that, I can record almost all day with one battery. That way I'm not, you know, opening the case and, you know, having opportunities for my GoPro to get wet throughout the day. You know, it's closed all day. Wasabi batteries. Okay, we'll link that up in the show notes. And what about yeah. memory cards? Have you got a recommendation there? Yeah, I don't think anyone needs any more than 32 uh, gigs. That's me personally, unless you're going to go multiple, multiple days um, recording without downloading, but I have yet to fill up a 32 gig, um, memory card. Uh, and then just make sure that it's fast enough, you know, get the fastest one because you want to make sure that if you're, let's say you're, you know, recording in 1080p, 120 frames a second, you want to make sure that that memory card is going to be able to keep up with the camera camera. Okay, cool. All right. So the guy's got his new camera. He's bought um, a Wasabi battery and he's got a 32 gig fast memory card. What settings is he going to program into that GoPro to start making the most of it? Well, I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm the worst camera guy on Spearheads. And <laughs> Jose taught me everything I need to know about GoPro and how to set up mine so he can have good footage. Uh, yeah, but cool. uh, so it's um, 1080. Uh, I, I don't think you need anything more than 1080 um, for what a traditional person at spearfishing is going to do. That's, and the reason I say that is because unless you're going to do a entire video with more um, resolution, you know, a 4K, uh, 
if you're going to edit it in 4k and you have a computer that can handle that great and record that but most of us don't and most of us are going to just put it on youtube and have fun with it i don't think you're going to need anything more than 1080 it still makes a great picture and then um you know the the frames per second the really the only reason that you need that in my opinion is to do the slow motion stuff um so i always like to keep it you know as high a frame a second i can so 1080 i think i think mine has 1080 at 120 frames a second and um that's good and you can do a little bit of slow motion stuff jose obviously works his magic with that and um yeah it'll give you a good all-around camera you'll get some unbelievable uh shots um and i think everything will come out um perfect for for what we'll we'll be doing with it you know okay cool and um like a lot of guys talk about how they had the lens set up um so like um some people say have it have it set wider but then everything seems further away and smaller is that so what's your experience with that uh we go to the medium setting uh that way uh, like you said, if it's wide, then you're going to get a big picture, but everything's going to be super far away. So when, if you're shooting a fish, you know, let's say you have a head mount and, uh, you try to shoot a fish, well, it's going to, the fish may not be visible, uh, especially if you're taking a long shot, um, okay. with that, with that wide view. So the middle one is, is really what we use. Okay. All right. Awesome. But what <laughs> odd question. What is the setting with the little rectangle and the dot in the middle that looks like the Japanese flag? Oh, it's called ProTune. And yep. the only reason that I've even heard of that is um, we did some filming with HBO. Um, right. A friend of mine it was on a show for a work and we went and helped them film and they brought the GoPro settings and, and ProTune. I, I guess it's supposed to help with the lighting. I'm not that educated with it. Um, I asked Jose about it. He said, don't use it. So um, ah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, what my guy says. Okay. Are, are you playing with a GoPro right now? You yeah. know I am. You can hear me, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're actually legitimately learning as we record these yeah. podcasts. So we, nice. we, so um okay so we've got 1080p, 120 frames per second, or that's what we think it is. Medium setting for what do we call that? What I, do I don't call know. That there's setting? there's three settings. There's wide, narrow, and then there's Normal, maybe? I, I don't know. Yeah, cool. No, that's all right. And the Pro Tune button, which has got something to do with light, but we're just not going to use that. Yeah. Uh, okay, any other, any other settings? Uh, nope. Um, that's that's all that we use. 1080 yep. and 120 frames per second okay. is... And the medium. Cool. All right, I watched a recent Spearheads video. It's right. about it's about mounts, about yep. how to take the camera with you. So there's gun mounts, head mounts, um, mask mounts, um, and then you, you've got these kind of these frames that you can put the GoPro in to give you more stability and things like that. Can yep. we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's actually very important. You know, we can talk about settings all day, um, but how you mount them and how you shoot your image is more important. Um, if you have, you can have it on 4K, but if you're not, you don't have a steady shot, then it's useless, really. So, um, you know. A mask mount or a head mount is great for getting those second shots. Um, it's easy. You know, you just have it on your head and you push the button and you listen for it to start and stop. Uh, the problem with that is you actually move your head a lot more than you know. So you're, when, you're, when you're looking at your video, when you're looking for those really crisp, really, um, really good shots underwater, um, it's hard to get that with a head mount and you'll only be able to use, uh, you know, a second here or a second there of the, of the footage because it's just moving so much. Mm. But, I but that, that kill shot, you know, you can get that, you can, you have the perspective of the person that's looking at it, you know? It, uh, it gives you, it's a dead giveaway, isn't it? That when you look at the footage of your, your head mount and you think that you're just some like stealth assassin on the bottom and it's just flicking around so much that footage that you realize it. Yeah, it's a good tell that you need to slow down underwater. Yeah, absolutely. So. You have to you have to be really cautious about it or conscious about it. Um, and then obviously there's the gun mounts, which uh, also have its place uh, that give a different perspective. Um, and you'll see in some of our videos, and you know, we have some head mounts and some gun mounts, and I've even made some made some wrist mounts. 
so that I can shoot oh. and and try. It didn't work that well because um, <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to hunt and think about filming. And I know there yeah, are some yeah. guys that have. Um, I don't remember who. I, I remember thinking those guys are animals for hunting and filming at the same time because it is really difficult to you know have your mind frame set on hunting and then while you're hunting switch to video mode you know and switch back and forth it's it's difficult yeah, um, yeah that's good cool but um the the gun mounts are great you have like the front for my gun i have a mount that uh, mounts in the back of the gun so i get the whole gun in the shot as well as hopefully the fish when i actually hit a fish but um you know hopefully you'll get it on camera <laughs> yeah sweet, sweet all right um uh, what about the head strap do you guys use that um I do. That's I actually don't have a um, mask mount. We just oh, okay, filmed. Yep. We just filmed in Costa Rica last week or the week before, and that's that was my secondary um, angle was the mask mount. The only, I mean, I'm sorry, the um, the head strap. The only downside to that is if you're wearing a, a wetsuit with a hood, then you know it's going to let more water in through the strap area, and it does get kind of uncomfortable throughout the day. But um, it works the same as a mask mount. Okay. All right. And um, so the standalone kind of, what do you call them? The other, the, the kind of the mounts that you hold in your hands. Oh, yeah. They're, uh, well, the one we use is called a tray. And tray. yeah, uh, they're actually kind of expensive. Uh, I, I think, I don't remember where Jose got the ones that we have, but uh, they're, I think they're around a hundred US dollars to get a tray, which is really ridiculous. Um, but uh, a lot of the footage that we've had for, for spearheads it was used using a tray and it really it allows for a really stable shot because you can use both hands and um you're not usually the person that's using the tray is not doing anything but filming so um that person's usually focused on getting a good angle and a good shot you know clear not moving around you know no jolting back and forth so it really makes for a great shot so so this the tray is like a two-handed sort of uh -huh. um little jig that the the GoPro gets attached to yep. now that, and you said most of your footage comes from that. So if you're going to, if, if guys are serious, they've got a crew of say three or four guys, yep. you would what recommend at least one of those guys in the water filming the whole time, like a dedicated film guy. Absolutely. Is that what you guys do? Absolutely. Yep. Well, we hadn't until, um, until Palm beach our Palm beach episode, which is the one before the Bahamas one and the Bahamas one. Um, we've changed our, the way we really do spearheads. And uh, from now on, every trip that we go on, uh, we have a dedicated camera guy or at, or two, at least one, but two. Uh, we try to have two dedicated camera guys if we can. Um, at, we really want to get those third person shots. You know, we want to get the whole diver, the whole you know, the whole moment. We want to get that, uh, and it's hard to do with you know splitting it between a head mount and someone else's GoPro that may have gotten the shot. You know, and yeah, yeah. It really, it really makes for, and those that have watched the Bahamas video can really see the difference in the production and the video quality using camera guys, you know? Yeah, it was really cool. I enjoyed a bit of your commentary there at the end too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah that, that was a really fun trip. How hard is it to get a Spiro to take the camera when there's fish around? <laughs> um, well, if they're me, then it's impossible. I'm definitely not, I'm not a <laughs> camera honest, guy. Yeah. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it if I need to. Um, but if there's fish around, I I have no desire to hold a camera. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, have, I'm definitely not that. So when um, you've been when you've been forced into it, um, what kind of or, or or even the other guys that are doing it? What what are kind of some of the best shots you've seen? Like, do they need to be on the bottom before the Spiro arrives? Or like what, what, what kind of stuff works for you guys? So um, the opportunities that I've had to do it, um, uh, matter of fact, in another Spearheads video, the profile with Brandon Kissel, I got the camera for a little bit so Jose could spearfish. And uh, the reason that you don't see Jose spearfishing in the video is because all of the film that I filmed got thrown away because it was garbage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, we have some unbelievable camera guys. Jose... Walker Blanco and Nolan. Um, and to get the best camera shot, like you'll see in the Bahamas stuff, I know I keep referring back to that, but that this is obviously our best work to date. 
is uh, Walker, and he's got an unbelievable breath hold. He goes down. You know, obviously, it's not always um, going to be able to happen like this because you're not always going to have an opportunity where you know a fish is in a hole. Um, but if he can, the the ca- camera guy can go down to the spot and try to get the entire hunt uh, on film. That is going to be the best shot. Um, but that means that the camera guy has to have a way better breath hold than the diver, which is, mm-hmm. is really difficult. But uh, Sounds like I'll have to be doing all the filming <laughs> and, and five meters of water with Turbo uh, for when he shoots whiting or mullies. Hey, but let's, let's, in five meters, we're not going to have any problem with light, are we? That's going to look <laughs> spectacular. The, um, no. I, t- I tell you, the... Uh, really good light. A guy that used to be really good at it, I remember years ago looking at um, Umberto Pellizzari, you know, the famous free dive instructor. Uh-huh. And he, and then I, I had to search it um, in Italian on YouTube. And he had like a series where he did like interviews and went spearfishing with some of the greats throughout um, the Mediterranean. Yeah. And like he, he would, they'd, they'd have lighting set up down there. The, he'd have all the shots where he was under the water and the guy would come and rest on the rock beside him and he'd be there doing it. He's, he's, a, he's a speddo and a, it looked amazing. I never even saw one fish get shot. I, like, I watched several of these things and I'm just like, when are these guys going to shoot a fish? Like they must have had so much setup and like it was just so well produced that, you know, like the fish are just like, few and far between and they weren't coming anywhere near them. So I just sort of think sometimes I sort of think you probably are just better off with a GoPro and yeah, and yeah. actually well, that's, seeing that's a fish a whole, being shot. A whole other a whole other problem that we have is um let's say in the Bahamas and you're trying to spear mutton snapper. Well you usually have to do a speto. And the problem there is you now have a guy that is over your back and scaring the fish away. While you're trying to, you know, trying to get these fish to come in. And uh, that was a problem. And about the only time that I ever had any big fish come in was when the camera guy wasn't on me. So it makes for a challenge when we're, you know, trying to spear these fish and there's a camera guy that's two feet behind you, you know, flipping his flippers or trying to get the right (laughs) angle. You know, the fish are not that curious to come, uh, to come in, you know? So it sounds like, this whole conversation, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, you got four or five guys in the water at once. So when you, when you get up, like there must be a lot of communication going on. Yeah. There's obviously if we were trying to get a certain shot, you know, the camera guy will, Hey, you know, I'm going to go down here and, and you go over here and try to, you know, uh, yeah. that is one thing about our crew is the communication. That's never been, that's never a problem. Uh, yeah. we're, we're all friends. Uh, so yeah. So going out and spearing and, and having fun is, uh, is Natural. easy. And then the, yeah, and the communication just comes, you know, we yeah, all have sweet. the same, the same goals. For- Who calls the shots? Like, is it, the, I'm talking like for anyone, like we've all got kind of crews of spearers we hang out with. We've got mates and that. Is it the cameraman that kind of organizes everyone or how, how does that kind of work? If you're talking about the, like the director of the trip, it's, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's usually Jose. Uh, he's okay. like the the guy that handles the creative aspect. Yeah. Um, All right. Cool. What angles need to happen? Um, you know, interviews that need to happen. The cool shots. He's the one that's kind of making sure that that's all happening. Uh, and then I'm the one that just coordinates the trips. So cool. I'm the one on the phone. You know, getting a airline tickets and a place to stay and a boat to use and so. I'm, I- I'm really appreciating hearing kind of the uh, uh, behind the scenes stuff because I've seen so much of you guys work. So I really appreciate you sharing um, so much information with us. Um, Do you need extras? Just <laughs> around in the background. Andrew's Absolutely. Already- <laughs> Absolutely. Come, come on over. We actually have uh, Timmy Knight. Do you guys know Timmy Knight from Australia? Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, exactly. he's coming over here in a few weeks and we're going to film a whole week with him. Oh, Get some oh. Aussie, Aussie humor in your hey. videos. Excellent. Yeah. We're going to mute him out though. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um is there like is there any add-ons you guys use with your gopros like i've heard of people using red filters and wide angle lenses or you know other other things like you've talked about spare batteries and memory cards is there anything else that makes a good addition no I, i'm not a believer in the red uh filter just because then when you come up you may you may have some footage you know some of the greatest footage that we've gotten is on top of the water right after someone speared a fish and, or, you know, some cool interactions. 
and we would have almost had that unusable if it would have had a red filter. Whereas you can add a little bit of red or, you know, Jose can, I can't, but Jose can add, <laughs> add some color to make it, you know, the color right underwater. Um, but I think that a red just is just an unneeded thing. Unless you're filming unless you're like a scuba diver and you're going under and you're only going to film underwater, then that's perfect, you know. I've nearly wrapped up my GoPro question, but I was going to ask you if you'd heard this tip. We had another guy on the show, and when they come up at the end of a dive, they do like a thumbs up in the screen before they turn their camera up if it's good, or a thumbs down if it's bad, or like a shaky hand if it's kind of they're not sure. Yep. And so that way, when they go through in the post edit, they know whether or not it's you know useful for looking over. Do you guys do something similar? I don't, but uh, Nolan, he does. He does that with his... Okay, um, cool. I just, well, <laughs> I'm not the one looking through the footage. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I just, I feel for Jose. I just, Poor guy. Yeah, I just, send, I I just send the footage too. off and let them mess with it. So, uh, they're probably going to be mad at me now, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Have you got anything more for GoPro Turbo? Um, no, but I don't think that just about covers it for me for questions. Did you have something else, Aaron? No, no, I'm, I'm good. Cool. I, I, th I think we covered GoPro. Cool. So the other thing we talked about before the show was how to get sponsored. So, I mean, you run Speared Spearfishing Apparel. You founded that to um, to get some good gear into the spearfishing community because I've read a little bit about you. You know, there wasn't actually that many options around for, yep. for Spearos for, for clothes. So you guys have come up with a kind of an innovative range. It's got some good art on it and uh, you're based there in Florida. Um, and, and a lot of people are emailing you through saying, how do I get sponsored? You know, can you sponsor me? So how, how do, um, you know, up and coming Spiros get sponsored? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, we get emails daily, you know, people, Hey, I'm, I'm 14 years old and I'm going to be spearfishing a lot this summer or I spearfish here. Or I spearfish there. Um, people have to know that when a company is looking to sponsor someone, uh, it's an investment. The company is making an investment in that person. So, um, you know, and I've learned this through, you know, the time that we've been sponsoring people, it's, it's, it's not taken lightly, uh, when we sponsor people now and, and we've got a great crew of guys and, um, we're not looking to, to add anybody else, but you know, these tips could be used with any other company and you never know when, when we're going to open up and say, okay, you know, we're looking for two more Australian, Australian. guys. And, right. Exactly. Yeah. Shrek and turbo yeah. straight in there. Boom. <laughs> I got I got zero to five meters covered. Shrek's got five to ten. Turbo's Turbo's going to represent a whole niche of divers that you know. I mean, they can't hold their breath or anything like that. But Thanks. you know, well, I'll, I'll call they... you guys. You'll be the first sponsors when we get when we get when we get our underwear line. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll bring suit, the potatoes. That'll suit me with my roving eyes in the nightclubs. Apparently, so that's good. Oh, that's <laughs> the chicks will see them. I promise. It'll be a whole new type of packing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so you said like, so the companies are looking at, like when they look at a decision whether to sponsor a diver or not, it's an investment. So it's a, it's a business decision. So Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so, so just getting an email, um, you know, hey, I am good at spearfishing, uh, that's not typical. And I, I'm not, obviously, there's people that are listening that have probably wrote me that. And, uh, it wouldn't have been turbo. <laughs> I'd, re I'd remember i probably wouldn't even open an email from turbo <laughs> turbo i probably would be like that's not happening but i'm um, sorry Aaron, but you are getting spammed now and for the next six months until i'm sponsored nice well i apologize to any other turbos that are listening i'm not sure um but anyway how do we get companies sponsored? companies take it really serious when they sponsor someone so yeah. What my suggestions are is, you know, Instagram and Facebook uh, are a great way to show the world what you can do. Um, so I get this all the time. People tag us in photos. Well, if if I, I'm not tagged in a photo, I'm not going to see it. Uh, you know, we're busy, uh, though I will slide through the, the my feed a little bit on Instagram or Facebook. I can't look at every picture that has spearfishing in it. So, um, tag Probably like the rest of us just when you're <laughs> on the toilet, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. That, you know, 20 minutes or so, but the, uh, <laughs> um, you have to, uh, 
put yourself out there so people can see it and tag us and not just, you know, actually tag us in the photo so that we can go through like an Instagram, for instance, that we can go in the photos that we've been tagged uh, and look at those photos. And that's how I'm going to see stuff. Well, if we see okay. someone that's on a regular basis spearing really good fish, uh, for one, um, is posting it and getting a lot of interaction from other people. That's what we're looking for as well. And then uh, three is doing it right. So um, for us particularly, we're not looking for someone that has a boat full of fish. You know, uh, for every time they go out, they absolutely you know wipe the ocean clean. Not that I have anything wrong with that, but that's just not the image that we're looking to portray. So you know, it's there's little things, and and you're going to be judged by us or any other company that is going to sponsor you based on your social media. So make sure that that is straight and is giving the right uh, perception of you. And, um, and then keep letting them know that, Hey, you know, I'm out here and I'm serious about the sport. You know, I'm, I'm doing it right. And I'm getting good fish and I'm, I'm not going to be here for, you know, 10 minutes and then go away when, when I find my next hobby, you know, uh, that's what we're looking for when we're sponsoring people. So they've got, to, they've got to play the long game and they've got to uh, portray portray a positive image Absolutely. And, and sort of sort of think about how um, brands and companies um, themselves want to be portrayed and sort of work along those lines, I guess, is what you're kind of saying. Absolutely. There's no way that I would sponsor anyone that I haven't been watching for six months to a year. That's how long it's going to take me to watch someone on social media, you know, see them and then go, okay, this guy's, you know, he's solid and... I, we take it very seriously when we sponsor someone. So it's very difficult, um, you know, it, and we look at everything when we do. Mm. So grow a following, but grow it smart. And, you know, think about the image of spearfishing that you're portraying and the lifestyle that you're representing. And um, and then, you know, if you play the long game, you, you might have something that's worth a company getting on to support. Absolutely. I just, I want to, uh, I just wanted to ask you, you mentioned Instagram what is or what are the most important social media platforms that a young spear fisherman uh, can be on and grow a following on that you know companies like yourselves are looking at? Instagram just makes it really easy because there's pictures. Um, it's easy to like pictures. You just double tap on them if you like them. Uh, you can search, you know, spear fishing. Though I haven't had time lately, but you know, in the beginning, I would search a lot of spear fishing pictures to see what was going on, excuse me. Um, I think Instagram is good. Uh, Facebook is good for the people that follow you, but, um, they're not really searchable. I don't think, you know, if you post a spear fishing picture, you know, um, you know, for, for getting brands to notice you, I would definitely say Instagram. Yeah. It's such a visual, it's a visual sport too. Absolutely. So Instagram yep. is a good platform for, yeah. And, uh, all right. So, you know, these, these guys are going to, you know, Build a following, and and they're going to create uh, regular content on um, on Instagram and portray yep. a good good image. What can they expect in reality from sponsors in the spearfishing world? I mean, you're not going to be a millionaire, I, I guess, from being sponsored. No, spearfishing no, I, I don't know of anyone that is paying anyone. Um, yeah. That's uh, I don't know, uh, but usually it's it's a, a dollar amount of gear annually. Uh, is pretty much the norm in our industry right now. So, um, you know, for us, we have a tiered um, sponsorship program. So, you know, if you're tier one, you're getting X amount of dollars per year in sponsorship goods, and you can choose what you want out of that um, out of that dollar. So, the, okay. our sponsor sponsor guy actually just go on our website, and they can order it, and and it ships right to them with their discount. Um, or um, I don't know of anyone that's paying paying people. I know that I think Rife does some trips for their people, but uh, oh, cool, yeah, cool. That's a pretty good overview. Um, are any any other parting tips with guys wanting to get sponsored? Uh, do it right. Uh, people are watching, uh, whether you think or think it or not. If you ever want an opportunity, um, per, perception is reality. So whatever you put online is what people are going to think of you. Today's Veterans Vault was brought to you in partnership with Penetrator Fins. Pound for pound, pound for considerable pound, these <laughs> fins have made the difference for me. Being a 120 kilo unit and using the heavy glass blades just was getting a bit old. I've upgraded now to Penetrator Carbons and won't look back. 
I've been using penetrator fins for years now, and I find the really reactive carbon fibre means I put less energy in for greater output, which means I spend more time on the bottom shooting fish. Check out the custom Noob Spiro Octopus Edition at noobspiro.com. All the same great features of penetrator blades with our new custom design. Or for the full range of penetrator fins, head over to penetratorfins.com. Okay, nice and segue out of veterans vault. Uh, what is the funniest thing you've experienced out spearfishing? Uh, oh. funniest. I'll I just think... preface that we've had we've had a lot of poo stories. We've had getting humped by a turtle, and uh, we've had some really really fun. <laughs> we've R- had some riding really... whales. So you, I don't even know if you could be too inappropriate here, Aaron. So oh, okay, I thought you were trying to put the pressure <laughs> on me. I'm like, great, <laughs> no, now, no, now no. I have, I have no, to come I up with a good like... story. No, I was just letting you know you could try to make tell one whatever tell you like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this one time, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, the funniest that I can remember, and, you know, obviously when we go on our trips, we have a lot of fun um, and we have a lot of funny moments, but my, I, I really don't even remember what I had for breakfast. So uh, I have a horrible <laughs> memory. And the only thing that I can think of right now is we were doing a video shoot and a photo shoot for Shark Shield. Uh, that's that uh, electronic shark deterrent. Um, I'll yep. plug them. It's really awesome. I use it all the time. Uh, okay. Great stuff. But uh, we were doing a photo shoot for them. And if it's on and it touches you, there is a shock. It's it's not bad. And if you know it's coming, it's it doesn't hurt at all. Um, oh, I hate it. You hate it? I hate it. it. Yeah, I've had it done for me so many times. And uh, by this one guy, too. And like, I'm just like, dude, I'm never being your buddy again. Just swim over there. I'm going with this other guy. <laughs> but uh, so I know what the, you mean. What's the Australian word for sissy? Um, <laughs> yeah, sissy's good, man. Yeah. I'm happy with sissy. Let's not go anything meaner than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but if you're not really? expecting it, it is a shock. You know, it, it's, yep. it's like putting a nine volt battery to your tongue. You know, it, it's not painful, but it, it shocks you. So we're filming and someone tells one of the guys to take theirs and put it on Jose. So he's in the water taking pictures and the guy swims over him and it ends up getting around his neck. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's like convulsing and screaming at the same time. <laughs> over the, the and uh, yeah, it was pretty hilarious. Obviously he swam away from him. He was cursing and yelling and maybe crying. I don't know, but he, uh, <laughs> He would not get close to anyone for the rest of the day. He, anytime <laughs> someone jumped in the water, he was swimming away. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. He didn't want to get shocked again. But, uh, yeah, he, he talked about that one for a while. It was, it was a great moment to watch. We need to get one of those, actually, for you, Daly. So, Thanks. yeah, as, I... as he got sh- but as he got sharked, uh, shocked, a uh, great white came up and bit his fin off, and then a turtle started <laughs> humping it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Seagull and he came, his pants. grabbed his mat. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to end up in some kind of pooing in your wet suit. That's yeah. like ninety percent of um, funny moments. Now, I was really just trying to preface the section with like, you know, you can get away with any story you like. We've had some just ridiculous ones, but that was a good one. I, I like that, and I, I can. I relate do know to Jose, someone so. that has pooped in their wetsuit, though. Um, okay. I don't know if Here I have the rights to say it, but it is someone that you have interviewed. And oh, uh, please. And I know who it is. is a friend of mine, but he did tell us a story <laughs> and I won't repeat it, but it was not a very good, um, not a very good sounding story and the rashes that followed. In the- <laughs> <laughs> so his, wet, his wetsuit was a brown burly bag. Yeah. Yeah. He, he did a good job. This is just hearsay. This is what he's told me. I don't know. Uh, cool. All right. We, I, I think, I think I know exactly who you know. Who are you talking about? He didn't tell us that, did he? No, he didn't. Righto. I so it's probably not funny if it's you. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Next section of the show is dive bag. What's in your dive bag? So head to toe. What equipment are you using on a normal day at spearfishing? Uh, dive bag. Uh, I'll start with the Shark Shield. Uh, that travels everywhere with me, unless I forget it at home when I go to Costa Rica, like I just did. I feel like an idiot, but um, Shark Shield. The, um, obviously fins, uh, I use deep apnea fins, uh, Carlos, he's in South Florida. I love them. Um, my gun, um, 
I, I made a gun with my buddy Henry from Balanita Racks. He makes spear gun racks. He made a gun. Tell us, tell us a bit about them. What was the name of the company? Uh, uh, Balanita. Um, it's Bal- Spanish for whale or something. I call them ballerina, um, <laughs> but it's Balanita. Henry is a really, really good friend of mine, and he makes okay. these really cool um, spear gun racks, and you can mount the racks on your boat or on okay. your um, wall, like in your garage. Uh, they're Sick. really cool. They're really nice racks. So he he had made a few spear guns. I wanted to make some, so we went and I ended up making a hybrid looking gun. It looks like a Daryl Wong, um, okay. but uh, I used some different pieces, and uh, those are my go. I have a 55 inch and a 65 inch. Uh, those are my Sick. go tos. And then my um, pretty much everywhere I go, my hammerhead um, uh, pole spear goes with me. I'm sorry, okay. my head hunter pole spear goes with me. And then my hammerhead yeah. gloves, um, both shout outs to friends of mine, Kevin and uh, yeah. Brad. And um, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty basic. And then the new speared wetsuit, that's definitely in my dive bag. Um, okay. it'll, be a, it'll be available next month. That look cool. I've seen a couple of photos already, I think. Um, yeah. So yeah, sweet. So what are you wearing over there most of the time? How thick is your wetsuit? Um, pretty much, it's getting into uh, 1.5 mil weather right now. Uh, depends on where you're diving. I just moved over to the west coast of Florida, so uh, I think it's still a little cold over here, and it gets really cold in the winter here in the 50s. Uh, okay. So you need wow. a five mil at least, yeah. Um, but uh, that's 50 Fahrenheit, so I don't know what that is Celsius wise. But um, so that conversion thing comes up every show, and I still haven't really got around. Yeah, to we're gonna have to get out. our head around the Fahrenheit Celsius crossover just so we can communicate. Um, yeah, it's all good. We- just know it's. Freaking cold on the West Coast in the wintertime. <laughs> Roger that. No. Yeah, bring a, five bring a five wetsuit. Mil. <laughs> so yeah, that's when you. That's why I kind of asked, like the thickness of the wetsuit. That probably tells me more than the the, the temperature. So cool. All right. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a, a dive bag chock full of goodness. So we got fast five facts for noobs. If you were starting out spearfishing all over again, uh-huh. what five pieces of advice would you have loved to have had? Number one, have fun. Uh, number two, learn the rules of the fish that you plan on hunting. Number three, ask questions to anyone that may be able to give you good answers. Number four, watch. If you're with anybody, watch what they're doing. Maybe they know something or are doing something that you're not. And uh, number five, be respectful. Um, to our natural resource, which is fish, you know, they're, they're not going to be around forever. If we keep hunting them out. Awesome. Fantastic advice. I'll just recap those. Have fun. Number one, number two, learn the rules of the fish. Number yep. three, ask questions of guys <clears throat> in the know. It'll ex- ex- speed up your learning curve. Number four, watch and observe the good guys in the water. Monkey see, monkey do. And number five, be respectful to our oceans. As Spiros, we are the custodians. So look after our environment. I had a little bit there at the end. Did you like that? Yeah, you did. You, you got creative with your uh, fast five, but um, that's That's right. great. <laughs> it makes it sound a lot better than I, I said it. And you, you had a bit of a story with your third one there, Aaron. Was that right? Uh, well, the learn the rules of the fish. So okay. anywhere that you go, learn the rules of your fish. So obviously I've been spearfishing in South Florida for a few years now. I know the species of fish. I know that whether something's closed or it's not. Well, I went to Costa Rica and I know obviously Kubera snapper and I know Wahoo and I know the main fish, but there may be other fish there that I don't know. So I go, you know, diving and it's, you know, we, we, were, we were working hard in this trip and uh, diving 80 something feet. And uh, this big fish swims up to me, and all I see is the lips, and uh, it's it is absolutely huge. The I thought I don't know if you guys know what a mora mora is or a sunfish. Um, yep. Yes, yeah, sunfish. So it kind of when I first saw it, I'm like, is that a, you know a sunfish? And uh, Nolan actually was filming me, and so it swam right up to me. I could have shot it. I'm like, I I don't know what it is. I'm not going to shoot it. That's my po- policy. Is if I don't know exactly what it is, I'm not going to shoot it. I don't want to shoot something that I can't eat. I come up, yep. I'm like, it looked like a Mora Mora or a big trigger fish. And he's like, that was a big trigger fish. No one was saying that. It was a huge trigger fish. You didn't shoot it. And um, trigger fish are really good eating. And it was, it was huge. I've never, ever seen one that big. So if I would have wow. known 
to be looking for that or that I could have shot it. I would have shot it um, and had a cool picture with it, but um, I let it go. I let it swim by. Ah, uh, okay. That that does give a bit of context for your point there. So yeah, so learn the rules and learn the species in your area and what what the size limits are and what they. I mean, some fish change as they get older too. They look different when they when they're juvenile. They look different again. So I, I I get what you what you're talking about there. So that's good. That was absolutely the case with this. It it had stripes on it, which is not normal. You know, it was a normal, but that's what it was. It was so big. It had these other markings that I wasn't used to. Yeah. And sometimes you go through like a fish ID book and you think you know what, what you're looking at. Yeah. But underwater, they look yeah. different again. And well, that's top profile too. You never get that in a book. Yeah, you don't yeah, get a exactly. top profile. Yeah, well, when I started, uh, I actually still have this book. Is um, I'm, I'm very detail-orientated. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to know the fish really good. So I actually went and found pictures of each fish underwater because you can go find pictures of a fish, you know, people holding the fish and they look different. So I went through and I made myself a personal book um, with all the species that I would see in South Florida with all the bag limits and stuff. And I carried this book with me the first probably six months I was spearing. So I actually oh, yeah, knew. Nice. That's a good idea yeah. too, like um, for guys starting out. I mean, sometimes in, in different areas, getting photos of those those fish that you are going to be targeting is quite hard. And so yeah. that's that's really good. I like that idea. And it's personal for your area. Um, I'm sure some, like a lot of spearfishing clubs, have guides for guys getting started. But um, that'd be really, really helpful. So cool yeah, idea. Yeah, it was it was really helpful when I did it. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Um, we've had an awesome time yeah. with you. But um, have you got sort of maybe something you'd like our audience to do? Something to check out on social media or something like that? Uh, well, obviously, uh, spearheads. Uh, we have a blast filming it, and hope that everyone. Uh, enjoys the videos that's at uh, on YouTube at Spearheads TV. Um, we have a bunch of episodes, a bunch of content, how tos, uh, different fun things on there. Um, and then also uh, Speared Apparel. You can go to speardgear.com. We have also we have uh, dealers all over the world. Uh, some in Australia there. We have obviously some in the US. Um, so you can check that out. We'll have a whole new summer line coming out uh, next month where we have our wetsuits. Um, board shorts and t-shirts and a whole bunch of new hats and stuff so awesome that sounds awesome all right uh any parting sort of advice have fun absolutely awesome. yeah the the person i i'm gonna steal this line from uh from gr tar one of people i look up to in the sport is uh the person having uh the most fun uh, actually i messed that whole thing up i don't even know what it is <laughs> <laughs> Start again um, from the let's top. Go. just have fun <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, I think that is that quote. It says the person who is having the most fun wins. Yes, that that's it? what I was going to say, but uh, it didn't sound right when I was saying it. So uh, that's yeah. all right. You just need some of that Shrek smoothness. It's the uh, the Kiwi right, accent. That's why through. we are in command. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, Aaron, we've had a lot of fun interviewing you today. I mean, we made a lot of awkward jokes, and uh, we just appreciate you bearing with us and coming to chat to our to the noobers, the noobers. Newbers, uh, you, have to, you have to use that American accent. The Newbers, the Newbers. Hey guys, hey guys, it's Shrek and Turbo. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty okay. cool. So, um, yeah, now we'll, we'll talk to you again sometime in the future, Aaron. It's been really good. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely, thanks for having me, and uh, you guys continue to be an uh, awesome influence on our sport. We hope you enjoyed today's episode with Aaron Chase. We learned a heap. And I really can't see myself getting sponsored anytime soon. Okay, our upcoming interview is with none other than seven-time Australian spearfishing champion, Ian Puckridge. I think he's also won the New Zealand Championships as well. And if you have ever thought about getting into comp diving, there is no better guy to listen to than Ian Puckridge. He's an absolute gun. And uh, he shares some great insights into comp diving with us and uh, how to improve your comp diving. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, you can connect with us on Instagram, Noob Spiro on Instagram, um, I think Shrek on Twitter, as well as another great one, or join our email newsletter. Get onto the website, Noob Spiro, and I think there's a pop-up there, and you can join our email newsletter. We also have a comp coming up as well, so if you want to find out more about that, once again, tune into the Ian Puckridge episode, our next episode, and we'll have the full details for our upcoming comp. Once again, thanks for listening, thanks for your support, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me, turbo at Noob Spiro or shrek at Noob Spiro, 
and we'll try and get one of our experts to answer those questions. Thanks again, and we hope you get in the water soon. Shrek, why don't you tell our listeners how they can save some money on spearfishing gear? Well, Adreno have partnered up with Noob Spiro to offer listeners $20 off all purchases over 200 bucks. And how do they take advantage of this deal, mate? Uh, listeners can use the code Noob Spiro at checkout online at spearfishing.com.au or they can use it in-store at the Brisbane or Sydney stores. Excellent. And that code is Noob Spiro. That's right, Noob Spiro.